guys, it's your girl Ro, and welcome back to another Uncensored Eats cooking video tutorial. Today on my menu, I am making 24 karat gold wings. And this is going to be amazing. I figured, why not switch it up a bit, you know? Um, being in the restaurant, I've seen a lot of people come through and they order 24 karat gold wings. And it is just so expensive with the work that goes into it, the people that's prepping, the people that's making, and the edible gold leaves that goes into wrapping the chicken. I just wanted to do something a little bit different so everyone can eat in luxury and in style. I wanted to show you guys that 24 karat gold wings doesn't have to be expensive. To enjoy this experience of eating 24 karat gold wings, it's just a simple way to show you that you can afford something as simple as that without breaking the bank. And today I'm going to introduce to you all my ingredients for today's menu and then we're going to get into cooking and making this dish delicious and everything a great meal should be. So I have chicken wings right here. These were cut up. They were soaked in vinegar for about 5-10 minutes to remove the rawness of the chicken and to remove any residual blood from the chicken. Over here, I have a mixture of a little bit of salt, black pepper, obey seasoning, flour, cornstarch. Right here, I have seasoned panko. The last time I made wings, I made the flaming Hot Cheetos, and I mixed the panko with the Cheetos, and that gave me that reddish tint in my panko. But today, being that I am making 24 karat gold wings, I seasoned my panko with parsley and some parmesan cheese some grated parmesan cheese to be exact and that's what we're going to be using i have my eggs over here i have my bay leaf my ginger my allspice berries my garlic my thyme and this is going to be for my oil in this bowl right here i have obey cayenne pepper garlic powder onion powder salt i have black pepper, and I have Jamaican all-purpose seasoning. And right here, guys, this is the golden ticket to this dish. I have 24 karat edible gold leaves, and this is what we're going to be using to wrap our chicken in, in the end. I am also making my homemade buttermilk dressing. The last time I made the Flaming Hot Cheetos, a lot of people requested me to make the ranch dressing or the ranch dipping sauce, and the recipe is going to be up for you guys. Don't worry. I will have the recipe in the description box down below. So please do not forget to check it out. But before we go any further, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Tag a friend to tag a friend. And hit the notification bell down below so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. So let's get into cooking. Okay, guys. And we are here by my stove side. And I have my oil right here. It's been on for a while, so it is extremely hot. Usually I have all my herbs and my spices into the oil, but I wanted to show you guys how I do my spices and my herbs into my oil. So I'm going to start by adding my bunch of, my tiny bunch of thyme. And wow, you can hear that. <laughs> Usually that's in there before it actually pops. Then you have the bay leaf, the garlic. The ginger and the allspice berries. So I'm just going to let the oil just take in the flavor of all the spice and the herbs, and I'll remove that and we'll get to cooking. So usually, when I do this, I have all this stuff in my oil before, like I had mentioned, and I slowly heat it up with the oil. But being that my oil has been on for a while and is extremely hot, I do not want to burn my garlic. I can burn the thyme, I can burn the bay leaf. But the garlic, I do not want to burn because burnt garlic will change the flavor of your dish. So I'm just going to use my spider. And I've introduced this to you guys before in some of my previous videos. It is great to have in your household. It is just great for every single thing. And now that I can smell my garlic and my ginger, I am going to remove all my slices. And that looks really good. I can smell the flavoring of my oil. And I just can't wait to 
start cooking. So we're just going to move back over to our prep station and we're gonna get ready with our breading and getting our chicken wings ready. All right guys, so we're back and I'm going to start by moving these over because I'm not ready for those as of yet. And I'll have my chicken wings. So like I mentioned, I clean these in vinegar and I block dry my wings and they're not too wet, they're not too dry. You just want it to be just right. So I'm just gonna mix all my spices together and I will be dumping that onto my wings. I'm gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of blended oil. Let me bring this closer to you so you can see. And we're just gonna work the seasonings into the chicken. I know a lot of people use gloves when they're home. It is your choice to use gloves. You don't have to use gloves. So yeah, so we're just gonna work or seasonings into our chicken. That smells really, really, really good. And I know this is going to be delicious. So we're just gonna let this rest for about 10 minutes. It's best if it's left overnight, that way the seasons can soak into the skin, into the meat, into the bones, and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, and we're back. Our chicken is well marinated, and I am just going to start moving my breading station a little bit closer and we are going to get started. Some of the tools you may need is a half sheet tray with a half baker's rack. You can use parchment paper on the bottom or you can use paper towel. If you do not have this at home and I do not recommend anyone to go out and buy these things, you can use a pizza tray, you can use a plate, whatever you have at home. So please do not go out and buy anything. However, I will be adding the link in the description box down below so you guys can know where I got all my gadgets from. You will also need tongs, a garnishing tweezer, a thermometer, and I already introduced to you the spider. So I'm just going to use my hands and I'm gonna get in there and mix my flour with my seasonings and my cornstarch and just give that a proper mix. And we are going to be on our way, so. It. Okay, everyone, so here comes the most exciting part. So whenever you're frying, you always want to have your flour station, your egg wash station, and your last uh, part of your breading station, which is your panko or your breading mix. So I have my marinated chicken right here. We are going to start by adding my chicken into my bowl, and we're going to dust our chicken wings. If you have a big bowl, you can add all your wings in the bowl. If you have a small bowl, I recommend that you do all your wings in batches and you go on from there. So I'm just gonna start by dredging all my wings first. And I'll put this right here. And then we'll move into the egg wash and into the panko. I like to work efficiently and a lot more organized. It will help you a lot better in the kitchen versus dredging egg wash and panko one by one. So you want to get your wings fully coated. And you want to do that for all your wings. And you're going to dust the excess flour off. Not dusting the excess far off will give you a cake like batter. Let me rephrase that. Not dusting the far off will give you a heavy cake like batter. And that is not what you want. You want when you're eating fried foods, it's like light and just like nice, you know, <laughs> and good. So you just want to shake the excess off and you don't want to bring all that flour into your egg. It will suck up all your egg as well.
right, guys. All our dredging is done, and we are going to move this out the way and move into our egg wash. Okay, now we're going to be moving into our egg washing station, and we're just going to egg wash all our chicken wings. You want to do the exact same thing to your egg wash. When you take your wings out, you want to shake off the excess amount of egg and move your wings into your breading. This looks really good, really good. Oh, look at that. I'll move this out the way and also this. And I'll just work my way into the panko. So I'll lightly coat my wings first so the panko could get onto the wings and I'll just add a little bit of panko on top of each wing. Oh, this panko smells so good. If you guys want to know how I season my panko for all my fried foods, please go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know and I will make a video on just that. Wow guys, look at this. Wow. Look at this. Look at this swing. <gasps> Beautiful, isn't it? So we're just gonna move that over onto our sheet tray. And we're gonna continue doing the exact same thing to all our wings. Now that all our wings are egg washed, we are going to get rid of the excess egg and just continue breading the rest of our chicken wings. And we're going to be doing the exact same thing here. We're gonna lightly toss them in the panko first, and then we're gonna work our way into smushing it down into the panko mix. All right guys, so now that our wings are all breaded and they are almost ready to go, let me bring that closer. Look at that. Can you imagine eating fried 24 karat gold chicken wings. That is amazing. That is truly, truly amazing. So what we're going to be doing right now is we're going to let our chicken wings stay table side for about 10 minutes so it can air dry. That way the bread in can set onto the chicken. So when you go to fry, your bread in don't fall off of your chicken. Also, another tip to cooking chicken in any form, whether it's fried, uh, whether it's uh, stewed, whether it's braised, and you know, so forth, I could keep going. You always want to take your chicken out at least 15 to 20 minutes before you start preparing it. That way, your chicken can come slightly to room temperature. Taking the chill off the chicken, or any meat for that matter, will give you a much better result in your end dish. And the reason for that is if you take meat from a refrigerator and put it straight in a pot, your meat will seize and it will become hard. It will be tough. It won't have that nice, soft, succulent, juicy tenderness that it will have had it been taken out 15 to 20 minutes before you start cooking it. So... This is gonna rest for about 10 minutes and we'll be right back, guys. Okay, guys, it's been 10 minutes and our wings is looking amazing. It looks so, so, so good. And we're going to move on over to my stove side once more where we have nothing but flavored oil and we're going to start frying our wings. So if you follow me on over to my stove side and we can get to frying and just continue on with this delicious dish, yeah, let's go. <laughs> okay, guys, welcome back to my stove side. But before we start frying, we are going to temp our oil. You want your oil to be between 350 degrees Fahrenheit and 365 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So I'm going to start temping. I don't know if you can see it, but my gauge is moving and this is definitely above 350 degrees. I also have my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit to finish cooking my chicken in the oven. We are going to be frying our chicken for six minutes and then we are going to move our chicken into the oven to finish cooking for another six minutes. So let's start by dusting the excess bread off and we're going to move our chicken into our oil. So we're going to fry our chicken in batches and we'll move over into adding our chicken back to the rack and we'll finish it off in the oven. So I'm just gonna bring the chicken a little closer so you can see it. This is what the chicken looks like. Oh my god, look at this guys. Look at that wing. Oh my god guys, our wings are almost done. Let's take a look at the last batch of our wings. <gasps> oh my god, look at that. Can you see properly? Let me get a closer look. Let me give you a closer look. Drain the oil. Oh my god, look at that. Oh, I just crushed that one. Let's get these out of here. That one. <gasps> Look at that. Oh, that looks so good, guys. I can't wait to dig into this. This is going to be delicious. All right, so now that all our wings are fried, let's take a look. They look good. They look delicious. Look at that. Now that they're all fried, we're going to move them into our 350 degree oven and let that cook for another six minutes and we'll be right back guys all right guys we are about to start making our buttermilk ranch dressing or buttermilk ranch dipping sauce however you want to call it so while we are waiting for our chicken to finish cooking we are going to start with our dressing so right here i have homemade buttermilk homemade mayo Sour cream, this is not homemade. <laughs> Sour cream, salt, black pepper. I have parsley, dill, and some chives. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by cutting our herbs down. And we are going to cut the end part of it off. The only reason why I'm doing that is because I had the chives in my refrigerator for quite some time and they are going bad bad all right so let's get that out of the way and we are going to start cutting down you want your herbs to be fine like you could have it like t like really really fine or you could have it um somewhat fine but you want it to be fine Voila, there you have it with the chives. We're going to do the same with our parsley, but with the parsley, I will be taking the leaves off. I do not want the stem in my, in my buttermilk. A lot of people use the stem. There's nothing wrong with the stems, but I prefer the leaves versus adding the stems to my buttermilk. All right, guys, so now that all our leaves are picked from the parsley, I'm just going to tuck them in a little bit, and I'm going to roll it or fold it in, however you want to call it, and we're going to be doing the exact same thing.
We're going to take her parsley, add it on top of the chives. And move into our dill. It's the same, just like the parsley, you want to take the fern of the, the ferns of the, or the needles of the dill off. Again, using the stem is fine, but for me, I do not want the stem in my dressing or my dipping sauce. You can also use this for, um, for salads. It's a quick and easy way to make a buttermilk ranch dressing. And you can add it to salads. You can use it to marinate chicken. You can just do anything with it. And I'll move that on over to the rest of my herbs. Okay guys, so we're going to be moving into making our dressing. So you need a bowl, a small or big. And I am going to add my mayo into the bowl. I'll have the recipe for this buttermilk ranch dressing in the description box down below, along with the 24 karat gold fried chicken wings. And you guys will have that to try. and my buttermilk. I'm just going to give that a mix. You want your buttermilk ranch dressing to be, or dipping sauce, I keep saying dipping sauce and dressing because you can use it for both. So you want it to be like really light. You don't want it to be like heavy. You want it to be light. You can use a whisk in this process, but I like to use a spatula to fold it in to aerate my dressing. We're going to add a little bit of black pepper, a pinch of salt, and we're going to keep folding it in. And then we are going to add our herbs. That looks really, really good. Oh my God, guys, look at this. Whew, we're just gonna keep folding this in. Ugh, this looks so great. Oh, look at this, this looks so good. And we are going to just taste our dressing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Mm -mm -mm. That is delicious, guys. That is delicious. Okay, guys, I tasted our homemade buttermilk ranch dressing or dipping sauce, and this is what it looks like. That looks really delicious. I can taste all the herbs. I can taste uh, the freshly made buttermilk, and it is delicious. I am just going to let this sit right here and come together even more. It is best if it's left overnight, like everything else. And we're going to start getting ready for our wings. So stay tuned for the plate up, guys. Look at our wings. Ah, that is nice. So I'm just going to do six golden wings so you guys can see what they look like. And... The rice I'll leave plain and we'll serve that up with our homemade buttermilk ranch dressing. I opened the packet of the edible gold leaves and this is what they look like in like a booklet form and you just want to be careful. And that's what, oh my god, that's what they look like. So I'm going to be using a garnishing tweezer to apply the gold leaves onto the wings. If you use your fingers, 
it will start to break apart on your fingers and you won't get much of the gold onto your chicken so I'm going to move that over and I'm going to take my garnishing tweezer and I'll lift one of the leaf see that's what it looks like it's starting to break apart on my tweezer all right guys so let's try this again I'm going to take my tweezer and I'm going to lift there you go and you just want to put it onto the chicken and we're going to be doing just that so there's about 25 of these into the packet And we're going to move our gold wings over to our plate. You can use a tweezer or you can do what I just did. So I'm just going to do six. And I'm going to, there you go. And you just want it to fall naturally onto the wing. So I'm going to move the wings closer so you can see it and we're just going to finish up our gold leaves. So this is it for me guys. Again, it's your girl Ro from Uncensored Eats. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Tag a friend to tag a friend. Hit the notification bell down below so you can be notified each time I upload a new video. Thank you guys for all love and support. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for always being here. That is it, guys, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.